Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Now, I've wanted to make an actual uh, lecture on the Ghost Adventure TV series, as well as these paranormal uh, series in general, and I'm going to start making my reviews of these um, uh, very soon. Uh, as they've been out there for years. It's amazing um, how long Ghost Adventures has been on and uh, how surprising these pseudo-reality uh, shows. And, oh, there's no such thing as a reality show. And we'll get into that as well. We'll try and keep this succinct, but there's a lot of information to get out there. But the whole idea is that uh, these shows are strictly entertainment and nothing more. Everyone needs to understand that. They're not documentaries. And I don't think there's been a a reality show that's been a documentary. I don't know if there's, uh, well, I think there was some in the past, but life is boring. If you expect the average person to come up with witty, fun things to do on their own, you're going to have a pretty boring show. I mean, that's the nature of it. And of course, you've got to understand um, uh, the media and Hollywood in general. Now, I am an author of over 35 books, five courses. I've been on the BBC, CNN, Art Bell Show. It goes on and on. I'm an expert in this field for over 50 years and I've been involved with a nonprofit research organization for over 40. So I work with people. I've studied this. I have the time to do it where you don't. Uh, so I know exactly what's going on. I've been watching Ghost Adventures on and off for many years and watched hundreds, I don't know if hundreds, but many episodes uh, checking for them. And I found all sorts of little discrepancies in their shows, but um, that's not the point of the whole thing. We have uh, plumbers that go out. I mean, all the ghost uh, investigators out there uh, that I've seen are all pretty unprofessional uh, people uh, who are not doing this as a career. It's hard to make money at this, and that's the problem with all of these alternative, quote, industries or interests or hobbies is that they are just that. You can't make enough money at it, so you don't have full-time serious people. And that's the number one problem with anything. So, And uh, this is done deliberately to keep everybody ignorant uh, of what's going on. But even people that get millions of dollars, actually, as Ghost Adventure people have gotten from the program, don't do anything. There's nothing serious about what they're doing. So, as we get involved in all this stuff, it is um, very uh, critically important uh, to understand who these people are and what they are. Now, uh, as we get involved in these uh, shows, um, <clears throat> they've been on Ghost Adventures. It's hard to believe for 19 years or 19 seasons. I'm not sure that works out to years exactly, but pretty close. Um, there is um, approximately 225 episodes, probably more. Now, you've got to understand how all this works in Hollywood and what it is. Now, Hollywood uh, wants to make everything their way. They think that the, everything that is out there, uh, they know about, and they can make it more interesting. So they'll change, delete, do whatever they want to uh, make it fit into their reality. And this is a really big problem to begin with. They're egomaniacs. They uh, waste your time and everybody else's money by shooting endless amounts of film. And then supposedly, and I don't think they really do, but supposedly spend um, hours and hours editing. But they're gonna, if there is, and I've had this personally happen to me. Now remember, what I talk about, I make sure I get from either very, very credible sources that I can verify, or I've went through it myself. I've been on these types of shows. They'll spend anywhere from 10 to 20 hours with you and cut that down to three minutes. Now it seems to me that that is pretty incompetent. And if you can't get something good out of somebody within a few hours, you ain't doing too good. But that's not how Hollywood works. We're important. We need to make lots of money. Oh, you got to pay me a lot. It's hard work 
shooting film and then you got to go in there and look at it again you know all the stuff that they want to make self-important so how you can take uh, 12 hours worth of film which is what happened with me cut it down to a three but what they do is they then cut that so if you pick your nose you make a goofy comment uh, you trip whatever it may be in 12 hours because uh, you're tired from their bullshit because you're on for 12 hours they're just sitting there picking their butts um uh, and of course, you know, their little teams, they got to have one guy that uh, holds a piece of paper, another producer that walks in circles. Uh, you've got all the things are going. The cameraman, the sound man, uh, the guy who tests the wind, uh, the official fart inspector. So the whole idea is that you have all these people in these incompetent, poorly done. Yeah. While other people are making entire movies on their cell phones. <laughs> so by themselves. Um, uh, and they tend to be a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to understand the media, and of course nobody does unless you so the media, because of uh, in the 1960s or 70s, whatever that was, Woods, Woods, uh, Woods, Shane, and Bernstein, whatever that is, when it became out the Watergate thing, who were pushed out there as great heroes of the American public uh, for exposing a break-in. <laughs> we got people getting murdered left and right, smuggling drugs and everything else by the media, but nobody cares. But uh, going after old Tricky Dick was a big thing with his little goofballs uh, in his cabinet. You know, that were so incompetent they got caught breaking into, I believe, a hotel room. Um, you know, I try and forget the stupidity. Uh, so the whole idea is that uh, reporters are owned by, uh, quote, the Black Lodge, the media, etc. It's just, you know, they do what they're told. They're regular people. They live in the society. They're harassed by the police and by gangs. Do you really think there's any independence in this world? Get real. So the whole idea is that, and they have no money. They're not paid that well, at least not your average person. Um, so um, the news media at a local station in the Palm Springs area was making $12 an hour. Now, uh, to be a camera person, to be on call all the time, this is peanuts. So the whole idea is that all of this is a uh, very important area to understand. And um, uh, so know your critters. If you're going to deal with them, know it. So I don't recommend people do any media. And if you do, you have to be very careful of what you talk to them and how long you talk to them. Um, and make sure you're highly repetitive so you don't give them any extra information. You're there to use them as a particular um, get your message across, sell your product, etc. But I'm not going to go into that. Let's go back to ghosty adventures. But, you know, it's all part of it. If you don't understand what the media is and who these people are, then you're going to have a problem. Well, first of all, Ghost Adventures has not, nothing to do with uh, Bilbo Baggins, who is the MC of the show. Oh, Zach Baggins. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Bilbo, oh, Zach, uh, is, uh, is now the head of that show um, after basically the person who started it, got it going, did all the work and everything else, Nick Groff, G-R-O-F-F. -F. Now, he basically started the show and got everything together. Basically, uh, Zach is nothing more than an MC, a master of ceremonies, the talking heads. You need people like this to a degree. It doesn't seem like Nick was all that charming or interesting. So you generally get a big mouth uh, to be the head of something. And, you know, we have this all the time. I don't know if people understand that, but, you know, news reporters aren't picked for their brains, even though some of them may be journalists. Uh, they look good. They speak well. It's hard to get, you know, nerds nerdy types, uh, to use that terminology, or people who tend to be more intellectual, uh, don't come off all that well. And maybe they don't speak that well, So, uh, even though they are. So what you do is you write things down so somebody can read off of a monitor or off a piece of paper and sound good. So you got to understand that. So who is Bill Bo Zach Baggins? So, well, other than his uh, Hobbit background, uh, where he grew up in a shack in the woods somewhere, um, he basically is just a nobody. So, um, being lost for years, uh, looking for careers and everything else, uh, finally, um, he... Um, and it's interesting when you look someone up that they classify uh, Zach Baggins, who was born in Washington, D.C., um, but was mostly raised in Illinois, um, who is now 43 years old. 
um, and they, they classify him as a paranormal investigator. Well, I think that's one of the major problems to begin with. So uh, that's your media for you. So the, the bottom line is, is that um, I read both of his books, by the way. I do my research. He's put out two books I know of as of now. I have no interest to read anything new because there's nothing to know about this guy. He does nothing in his field. He's created nothing. He's put up one money-making thing after another. Um, he has, he's nothing more so. He wandered about not knowing what to do. And finally, Mommy, which is nice to have Mommy that does that, uh, where the money came from, uh, put up, uh, I forget what it was, anywhere from eight to $15,000. That's nice. I, I, was, I was lucky if I had $50 a year uh, from my evil father to buy shoes. So, um, so the whole idea, I'm glad that mommy came out to give him this. Uh, get into film here. and went to film school. And um, one of these private film schools. He didn't go to any of the major college film schools. So he went to a private film school where they you pay your money. Uh, people like directors um, uh, of the um, Clerks movies did this. Smith. So, uh, and a lot of people do this. You go in there because, you know, getting into a USC film school and everything else is quite difficult and a lot more expensive in the long run. Going to these big shot schools is very expensive and difficult to get into. So all of these things. Is, so he went there and uh, went to that school and that was his great training, which I think was about eight months or whatever of how that school, you know, don't get me on the details. I don't remember these things. The bottom line is that he has no, he got out of high school. He has no other educational background. He does not have a degree from anything other than high school, whatever that means. I'm not sure that college degrees mean anything because all the people I've met from college degrees are kind of stupid. But, you know, this is what society says that if you're smart, where's your degree? You got a PhD? Yeah, we'll put you on a show as an expert. Um, since he doesn't have a PhD or anything else, of course, you're not going to see him on the No Proof Allowed show of Missy Jeff, Jeff Love. And of course, he's under 80, so he's disqualified. So the whole idea is that um, uh, all of these things uh, need to be understood. So, so that's it. Um, so he has no background whatsoever. He has no interest in anything else. He never did anything. He lived in Florida a while with one of his parents or whatever. His mother got divorced, etc. So he wandered about doing odd jobs, basically, trying to find himself. So, um, and what do you do with all that? So the whole idea is that um, um, he eventually uh, ended up as in... Uh, I guess for everybody who's kind of out or weird or strange, Las Vegas, Nevada. So he ended up in Las Vegas DJing. How he, I guess anybody can DJ. I'm not sure uh, how special that is or anything else. But it showed, I guess, he has a little bit of gift of gab because DJs have to talk a little bit. Um, so I guess he just had a lot of records, CDs, whatever it is you use as a DJ now. So the whole idea is that... Um, uh, this is what he ended up. So what was he doing? And I believe, uh, you know, again, don't hold me to the exactness of any of this because I don't remember. I'm not going to go back and read his book. I have so much to read and do. I can't go back and, and look at these things. I read a book. I then scan it and throw it in the trash and I have a record there. But for, I'm not sure what I'm ever going to do with it. But I'm sick of having thousands of books that you really never go back. Why do you want to read something old when there's something new out? So, um, so per uh, Bilbo, um, after going through this great artistic thing, and there's little things happen here and there, uh, he uses his great skills uh, to become a GJ. So, because, of course, you know, there's not a lot of film jobs out there. So during one of his GJ gigs, I think it was a wedding or something, he meets Nick Groff. Groff. So, um, who, of course, is the brains of everything. Here's a guy who, uh, as well, went to film school. Um... And was interested in all these things. Um, and they got together. And uh, guess what? How did he get these things going? Well, they went out, of course, using their uh, paid-for skills and uh, did some sort of films uh, of different things. And something happened. A brick flies across the room and whatever, uh, which I don't believe at all. I believe, personally, I allege that was staged. 
Of course, they say it's real. Who knows? But um, if you look at the stuff, none of it seems. But you, are you going to make a film? And this is the amusing thing about all these um, unreality shows, these pseudo-reality shows. Pseudo meaning false, because they're not really. Everything is staged and set up. Um, and... Um, and as I said, I don't think there ever was a reality show that was real. There was when they uh, started many years ago, and they found how difficult that was and how much more time that has spent. So things like um, um, the different uh, shows that are out there, they actually are scripted, and many have come out and said that. They script, they tell you what to say. And I don't know if they tell you every word, but they're going to get you going, put you in positions, and have you say things that are interesting. So this is how things happen. So it's all staged to make it look, but it's staged within this could be real. So well, we need to understand that because there's no difference between a pseudo reality show and a pseudo ghost adventures or um, what amazes me is things like Bigfoot and other things where you never ever see anything. And they somehow make these shows interesting, which is mind-boggling to me because nothing ever really happens on these shows. It's all suspense with... Nothing. So basically, it's like watching the uh, classic movie Halloween. You know, it's that constant cool music psyching you up. And at least in that movie, there was some payoffs. But generally, it comes to the point where dun dun dum, nothing. So, oh yeah, but there was something there. And of course, it's amazing how these shows are made interesting and kind of compelling. But I guess it shows you uh, how well these kind of shows are done. And there's a few people that do all these shows and have it down. It's a, it's a formula that they put together. So the point is he got together with him and uh, he, guess how they got this going on uh, the travel channel, Somebody knew, he knew a relative who worked for the Travel Channel. That's right, a relative. So that relative took his goofy little film and showed it to the Travel Channel people who then financed it. And um, now has aired for almost 20 years as of, well, it has for 20 years uh, as of this year. So the whole idea is that it's quite fascinating. And um, he's tried several spin-offs, and we'll get into the whole what happened here. Uh, and actually, the book, and I've read the book also, because as I said, a Nick Ross book, uh, which really goes into the details and tells the true, true story. Bilbo Baggins' books are, are basically nothing more than uh, egotistical babblings of, about him and ways that he wants to make more money. Um, so... Um, all of that is a part and parcel of, uh, of that. But who are these people? What are they? You know, they, uh, they claim to be some sort of investigators. They're not. They have no training, no background. They have film school. They're film people. They're looking to get TV shows. This guy would film anything to make money. Uh, if he could get into porno, I'm sure he would have been in that already, selling that. Um, he had nothing. He was a DJ. He had no connections. He banged into this person, or maybe it was even contrived for this to happen. Who knows the real facts? Uh, but here we go, Nick Groff, who went out there and did all the work, the editing, the figured everything out, got the name of the show he contrived. So the whole thing comes from Nick Groff, and basically Bill Bowes is just a uh, talking head. And it's as simple as that. So, and of course, um, you need someone like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But he wants to say how he believed in all this stuff. He claims he had a couple of uh, ghosty experiences or metaphys. I don't know what you call them, metaphysical. And the term supernatural, of course, is a bad. He claimed he had some of these odd um, meetings of spirit entities. One of them was in um, um, Detroit when he was living there. Um, a dangerous place to show you why was he there but the point is is that where some spirit grabbed and jumped on him in his apartment now, i've heard this from many people where they claim that they've had this somebody jumped on them and pushed him down i'm not sure that's a great uh, of course there's no one there we're not talking about physical people in terms of a presence but a presence and energy pushed him down and some other little thing now um the amusing part is, is Nick Groff uh, claims that he had a near-death experience because he fell off a roof onto a fence and almost bled to death uh, by that. What it shows you how ignorant Nick Groff is, is that he thinks a near-death experience is almost dying. 
Well, that's not what near-death experiences are. They're not a physical thing. It's a uh, consciousness or spiritual thing. When you start leaving your body, seeing things, going down passages, whatever, it's a metaphysical experience. It's a, uh, a consciousness experience. It has nothing to do with almost dying. Uh, millions or maybe billions of people every day almost die and get nothing from it. They don't have any experiences whatsoever. And I've known many people like that. So he didn't have it either. So I almost died. I had a near-death experience. Well, I guess in the crude way of looking at it, but that's not the meaning of it. The meaning of a near-death experience is that you have a spiritual experience. He did not have this. So, uh, so they're all trying to say how they somehow are into this because oh, I've had these things. And, of course, Bilbo Zach Baggins um, uh, claims this as well. And, as I said, that was his major. But that's not much of an incident anyway. Seeing UFOs as not being a UFO investigator, thinking a spirit popped up or something popping off your shelf is not a poltergeist experience per se. You may have had things happen like this in your life, and I'm not sure there's anybody who hasn't seen a UFO or what appears to be, but 99% of those are military crafts. Uh, so uh, they're not extraterrestrial crafts, and that has to be defined, and that's for something else. Uh, so it's important to understand that that's the way it is with uh, Bilbo and this guy. So who are they? What is their background? Have they been into metaphysics? Have they been studying uh, ghosts? Have they been investigators? Have they been any of this stuff? Have they read a book on uh, psi power? Uh, have they even watched a TV show on psi power? Uh, uh, nada. So these people are nothing. What are they doing? They're sitting there as two unemployed, uh, do-nothing film students who have graduated college with a big, um, it cost them a lot of money, or at least mommy money, uh, when it comes to Bilbo. Um, and what do they do? Well, everybody, I mean, there's a lot of, quote, Hollywood-type people. They're always looking for some way to get their stuff on the air, get produced, what's new, what's different, and always looking to break through, which is extremely difficult. It's probably difficult in any industry, but in Hollywood, it's even more difficult because there's so much competition and there's so much potential benefits. You're talking about millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in the entertainment industry. So as we understand that, uh, we need to fully understand the fact that that's who these people are. So there's no background, there's no nothing. I believe, I'm not sure if Nick Grolf, um, I think he was working at the Nevada College for a while, I'm not really sure. Um, and of course, you know, they've given him a uh, ridiculously garbage um, a file on uh, Sewerpedia. Uh, so uh, we can't really find out anything. I'm not sure if he has a degree or not. So I read his book, which is very good. If you're going to read any books on that, make sure you get his book. And I will be putting links uh, to all these underneath. And hopefully there are Kindle editions of these books, which you can get inexpensively. I love Kindle books. Uh, they don't take up all sorts of space. Uh, they're there. And if you can get the less expensive ones, it's a real deal. Some Kindle books now seem to have uh, tripled in price. They're not really much of a bargain, but you still don't have that big thing hanging on your shelf for the rest of your life or end up in the goodwill. So the whole idea is that he did everything, um, and it's all listed in his book, as he said, even coming up with it. You've got to remember that uh, Zach Baggins was nothing more than a DJ, a lost soul. Mommy paid for his school. What do you do with it? Well, nothing. He didn't go out there and make films. He wasn't trying to do things. He was working as a DJ uh, in these areas. So uh, plain and simple. Uh, I'm not sure what he was trying to get into. Uh, but, of course, this, you know, serendipic luck, whatever you want to call it, uh, all of a sudden he meets this other guy who not only is an, uh, another person who went to film school, but a guy who has connections. And this is what it takes. In, uh, every single person that I know has ever got into, got their stuff made in Hollywood, knew somebody. And this could be as simple as the connection of that um, it happened here. This guy had a relative who was a secretary for them. So the point is, is that you have that opening. So you as a secretary can go in to say, hey, do you see this thing here? And it's generally not offensive. Uh, it's very hard to get to these people in general. So Nick was able to do that with a relative and uh, they bought it. 
uh, they got into it. They wanted to see what it was about. This is really the first show of its kind that I'm aware of. There's been many specials in search of all sorts of things done in the 70s, which are ignored. Um, and this was the first thing that um, uh, actually went out there and uh, do it. So the Ghost Adventures uh, film aired on Sci-Fi Channel in uh, 207. Now, this is the little film they made with the brick fly and everything else. And then, um, apparently, um, the actual series um, ap uh, appeared in 2008 on the Travel Channel. And now it's been going on for 20 years. Um, and as I said, it's amazing how you can watch these things over and over again, and they're kind of interesting. The same thing with Bigfoot, but there's absolutely no proof. And I very carefully watched everything from Bilbo, and the uh, he has produced, I think once a season, something happens. A hand moves, this moves, something drops. Um, and of course, as far as I allege, all this is staged. So um, you have to produce something eventually, and there's absolutely no way to prove if these are staged or not. And of course, they're on film, they're in dark areas. Uh, they all are things that um, uh, are highly edited. I'm sure everyone in the production crew knows this, and it's all part of, well, <laughs> you can go out there and be honest and uh, live in your car, or you can be a crook and live in mansions or have three or four Bentleys like uh, Bilbo has. So the whole idea is that, what's that? So the point is, is that he has no background, he has nothing. In it. Now, after a while, uh, Nick Groff, apparently, who was the more into, he did everything, by the way. Came up with the name, he edited all the shows, he got everything together. Zach Baggins just sat there and talked, it was a talking head. We need to understand, there's nothing from what I could see has ever came from him. And uh, he goes into a lot of different areas as well and uh, talks about the whole industry and how he's interested and how he wants it. He's done nothing to assist in 20 years. And by the way, he's made millions of dollars from this. He owns many Bentleys. Um, he has uh, large houses uh, in uh, Las Vegas and probably other areas. Uh, he hawks every possible thing he can get. He says, I don't have time to help the industry, but he's opened up all sorts of attractions. He started other shows. Um, so um, he tried to uh, start Aftershocks Ghost Adventures. He's got a museum in, um, of co cursed items in Las Vegas now. You know, he's making money hand over foot from this stuff. He's constantly hawking something to make more money. And that's not because he needs money. He just wants more. And is any of this? Well, I have no information, and nor is it stated in his books, that he has given any money to any ghost-type uh, organizations, nor has he started one. Uh, he's ran into the usual problem that you get with these kind of organizations, is that there's a lot of controversy. People don't get along. And this is done deliberately because they're government infiltrators who make sure these things don't work out right. But people t are paid to do this, something that Nobody wants to talk about, but is the fact. So these infiltrators come in and cause problems. And you can be as small as four people. You'll find out that there's a government infiltrator there that caused problems. That's the nature of how everything goes. So if you don't understand that, again, you're lost and you don't understand. But this is a nobody who's done nothing. And uh, you have to fully understand. So I don't put them down for that. Uh, Nick Groff, who... Uh, has been totally dissed by Zach uh, because he wanted to go and do different things, but he wanted to expand on this and not be the little in the corner guy and just do this funny little show. And he eventually did go out and got shows on other networks, which apparently failed. And this may be, again, deliberate that they made sure that he, the troublemaker, uh, was unable to do things. Um, uh, and make sure that his show failed, and this could be even internal, making sure that uh, the, the, his show on the Travel Channel worked. Now, there's many other of these investigator shows out there. As a matter of fact, they have one with everybody, and I've done some reviews on them already. You got the plumbers. <laughs> yeah, let's go, for, let's go under the house and fix the plumbing while we're looking for ghosts. Then, of course, you have... Um, uh, they recently had the, the Brothers in the Hood. And none of these guys have any any background whatsoever. When you look at them, they're all, they must be connected with the networks. They must be buddy pals and friends that they say, hey, uh, you can talk. You look kind of pretty. Let's put you in front of the camera. Here, read a book and ghost. So they got the brothers to hey, man, look at that. It's real. Woo. You know, it's a whole thing of, uh, you know, 
catering to that audience. Then they got the hillbillies, yay, for me and Jesus. Let's play the Jesus, and we're going to capture one, uh, you know, like they did in Ghostbusters. <laughs> and when we're going to bring them back to the still, and we're going to get my wife, otherwise known as my sister, uh, and we're going to uh, get them ghosts. I mean, there happens to be just about every possible little ghosty person out there making a show. And, um, and you got to understand that Hollywood's all about making stuff as cheap as they can and getting some sucker to watch it. You know, producing any kind of TV shows are super expensive. I think an hour action show uh, for your television networks is probably up to like $50 million an episode now. People don't understand. Maybe even more, depending on the show itself. Even half-hour shows, uh, um, which are the cheapest things, things like Friends, other things, um, you name it situation type comedies that run for half an hour so are very inexpensive I mean, it really just comes down to uh, your standard cost plus whatever the actors get so there's there's no really money in sets or you don't go anywhere you film in studios um, so all that stuff is really very um, easy to um, produce at low cost the same thing with all these shows and that's why you see so many of them so even if they fail I'm assuming they break even because they're getting their costs out of that so any kind of reality shows or what? Who's involved in them? Who are the people? Now, they're not paying any of these people very much. They always It's always an ego thing. And, of course, once you're in a show, uh, you can then uh, do what is typically done, and that is, uh, well, it's a successful show now, guys. Uh, you need to start paying me a lot of money because you're making a lot of money. So that's what goes on, and that's usually what happens. And you hear controversies of some people leaving. That's because they didn't get the money. So this is very typical. And this happened in the new show called, uh, action show called Hawaii Five-0, where a lot of the cast members left because they weren't getting what they felt the proper pay was. And this is typical so, uh, of what happens. So, but the point is, these are very cheap to produce, and you generally get uh, people like him. I'm assuming both of these guys are paid very little industry-based, uh, they weren't paid very little, period. I'm sure they made excellent money even at the beginning. Uh, but the point is, is that's it. And these things are new. Um, they have to keep their budget down. You know, things have to be done very quickly. Even with low cost, things are done super quickly. So the premise of the show and how real ghost hunting is done, which I'm not going to get into right now in any kind of details, but it is important to understand that these are long-term studies. And ghosts, spirits, and everything else have been highly proven to be. In 150 years, of this research and there are people that did this um, who are much more credible these are not credible these are not investigators these are not these are hollywood guys making entertainment um but uh there have been investigators uh, for the last 150 years who have verified this and have excellent proof of spirits and others so let's get that understand that these things are real <laughs> they would know a real ghost if they stepped on it or it actually went in their ears and uh, popped their hair out so the whole idea is that uh, these people have no background. They've went to no schooling. They have did no extra training. They, you think they would go and say, well, I'm going to go take a class here or read. They're, they're not doing any of that. Um, they, and this is proven by the fact. They also get one of the worst, well, of course, is there good engineers? But some electrical engineer that is uh, putting together um, tools to help. He wants to look scientific, you know, Bilbo. Now, he's not wearing shoes, so he's got to have uh, these kind of things because his feet are too big. So the whole idea is that, yeah, Zach wants to bring in, he bring in this bozo guy that knows absolutely nothing and has sold his uh, crappy products on eBay and other places, which are uh, engineered with the mind of a flea. He doesn't understand anything. you got to remember that engineers, uh, while they may, na some, may know some common stuff about electrical components, uh, that are in certain things, uh, you know, how to put it with this uh, together, <laughs> how to plug it into the wall. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer. So they may know those types of things. So the whole idea is that that doesn't mean anything because uh, the technology to pick up these subtle energy physics um, is these 
information, these energetic informational fields has to be done by somebody who's a great expert in that field that you have to work with. Um, you have to work with someone like myself. And then, yeah, I don't, I'm not too concerned about how electronics work. So you work with a guy like this to say, well, let's try this to pick up the energies. They have no idea. They don't understand how any of this works. But of course, Zach went in and got this goofball guy that he likes to put up there as this special engineer. I mean, this guy is so low level. Um, you can't even see him on the surface of the ground. He would be like 100 feet under. That's how low level he is. So, I mean, this is very typical. But, of course, you wouldn't get that from the great research that Zach did. He's too busy buying um, um, uh, all of his Bentleys and houses and all the other things he claims he does. And, of course, he has no skills. Uh, the editor for the show, of course, which was uh, the other guy, Nick, um, well, he had to replace him because the minute Nick left, he didn't know how to do anything. So he doesn't do anything but play. You know, he reminds me uh, very much of the Apple creator guy, Steve Jobs. who never really knew nothing but walks around. I'm tough. I know everything. Don't mess with me, man. Uh, I'll fire you. And this is pretty much how it works, but knew absolutely zero. So the whole idea is that's where you're going to get. He knows zero. He's done nothing. He hasn't taken any courses. He doesn't talk to anybody of any value. He doesn't bring on anybody that has a brain because it's going to make him look like the stooge that he is. He's going to look like a fool. He has no background. So he's not going to bring on top investigators. He's not going to bring on other people. He's going to bring on an idiot engineer that uh, probably is still trying to figure out how to fix his car. I uh, can't get it to run. I'm an engineer. Uh which, of course, comes from real life because I know lots of engineers that couldn't do that. So the whole idea is that um, all these things that happened out there uh, were uh, uh, of this guy. It's not. He is virtually nothing more than, he, well, not virtually. He is nothing more than an MC. He's a master of ceremonies, just as uh, all the other. Did you think in the classic wonderful series done by Leonard Nimoy called In Search Of that he was an expert in this field? He was a talking head. They brought him in to do that. Uh, that was a time when Star Trek was just popular and they were trying to bring in more of the kind of cool spacey stuff. And that's when space was popular in general. People had just landed on the moon. Um, so the whole idea is they brought this guy in because it attracted attention. So what he does is that he could speak. Well, unfortunately, Nick was not that great at that. Not horrible, but he didn't have much of a charisma. And I think that's one of the problems why his uh, newer shows fail. But so he tried to get into other shows, do other things. Uh, he basically was uh, totally disregarded and dissed uh, by Travel Channel. He went to other people who didn't want to back him either. Uh, very typical stories of Hollywood. Uh, you know, like Star Wars was turned down by every single studio uh, until finally somebody picked it up. So he had no uh, none of these things. But And they have no background. Nick has no background. I don't believe he, what, even if he has some college education, that doesn't mean that uh, it has any value. I mean, going to film school and get a degree in film production doesn't qualify you to do anything but make films. So, um, and everything in the Hollywood industry is all bright. There's writers, there's filmers, there's directors. They don't have any knowledge of anything uh, other than they're very, you know, they're a director. They know how to direct. They don't know about the subject matter that they're, uh, filming. And the same thing with that. Does a cameraman, is he an expert on whatever's happening? No, he's an expert on getting those pictures to look of what he's seeing. Uh, so the whole idea is that none of that. So none of these guys are trained. Um, as he said in his books, he talks about all these interests and how he wants to help. The, he's done nothing to help the field. He has hundreds of thousands of dollars from everything. He, I'm sure he's very wealthy now. After basically 20 years of doing this show, he must have tens of, or hundreds of millions of dollars pouring in to, to his uh, coffers every year. Uh, he has time to open up um, little museums in Las Vegas and do other things. Um, being the kind of low-level person that he is, he doesn't understand that when you do shows like this, you're going to kind of meet people who are strange and odd. And he can't deal with that at all. And he's very fearful. Uh, I guess he's had some death threats. So in his book, you'll find him going out and he shows guns and pictures. This is so typical of what people do to say, well, I'm ready for you. Don't mess with me. Well, I don't know if that works or not. 
you know, Steven Seagal did this, who had all sorts of problems. So he moved to Arizona and then got an interview holding machine guns where you can own them legally. So the whole idea is that this is the kind of thing. So he did that. He talks about how tough he is and how he works out and how he can beat anybody up. Um, all this kind of stuff. Um, hard to beat a 45 screaming at your chest, Bilbo. So, you know, this kind of stuff that uh, you're ready for people to attack you um, is kind of strange. Uh, but, of course, you know, this is part of being in the public life. You want to drive your Bentleys, you want to have giant mansions and all the other things that come with that, and your hot and flow women. Well, the point is, is that uh, you're going to have, that's what happens when you're in the public. You don't even have to be that much in the public uh, to have problems. You could be working at a store and someone comes in and robs you and blows your brains out, which happens in a lot of fast food places and other things. Uh, so, um, what about people who are constantly robbed at these um, 24-hour stores? This happens all the time all around the world. And, of course, you're worried. They don't have the money to protect themselves. So these kind of things are um, what has to be understood uh, with all these things. Uh, so um, uh, this is where he's coming from. So he's had that. Of course, that's just part and parcel of what you're doing. But there is nothing. He supported nothing. He's given money to nobody in, in the field. He claims to be a nice guy. He loves animals. He supposedly, which is shown in his book, uh, which I'm not too impressed by, to be honest with you. But he gives money to help animals, particularly, I guess it was dogs. And he gave $5,000 to the Las Vegas area. Again, the details are, even though I do remember it's $5,000, uh, the details of which facility this was. So he likes dogs. He gave that. Well, good for, good for you. But the check was $5,000 from a guy that probably spends that on uh, a night out. So I'm not sure I'm too impressed by that. Did he help out in other ways? Has he done other things? As far as my knowledge, he hasn't, and he doesn't talk about it. But, you know, the stupidity of not talking about your good work is kind of stupid uh, and something that should be screamed from every street corner. Yeah, I did this. What are you doing? Uh, people think, oh, well, you just want to tell everybody how well, wonderful you are because you give money. Well, it's not about that. But, you know, hey, yeah, you deserve a pat on the back. But it's about, hey, what are you doing? I've given this amount of money. But $5,000 from a guy like this who, uh, who has a $250,000 car <laughs> is um, maybe you should donate one of them cars so the dogs can sleep in the back of it. So the whole idea is this is the kind of nonsense you get out. So I don't find any credibility for that. As a matter of fact, everything I get from this guy is pretty negative. He comes off and he has to. If he walked around like a comic, saying, ah, 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 hey, look at that bump. <laughs> walk, walk. Oh, let's go over here. Here's that chair that supposedly moves when you sit on it. Yeah, be careful. You don't want to sit on it. Walk, walk. So the whole idea is that, you know, if you do that stuff, you're not going to be taken seriously. Now, what happened in the last 10 years here is programs went from being very negative about extraterrestrials, ghosts, and everything else. People were sick of nothing exists. I'm the unamazing gay guy. Ooh. And uh, doesn't exist, I can tell you right now. So, um, I never went to high school. I know what's going on. So, these kind of guys, everybody got very tired of. So what happens is the show's changed. Finally, these people woke up, and I had talked to some of these people about 15 years ago. But, you know, let's make good stuff that uh, shows what's really happening. Uh, and there were people starting to do that then. So they came out and started producing shows and um, uh, of what all goes in that area to come out with positive things. So... Um, so this started to go, and people were producing, as they are today, all sorts of uh, UFO shows and ghost shows and everything that, that show that, hey, this is real. At least that's what they're saying. Again, ghost shows and most of these other, well, not, I don't know about the other shows, because some of it, but they're all tainted and fake in terms of the facts. So none of these reality shows are real because you can't produce phenomenon like that. And we'll get into that right now. But all of these shows. So people started getting the ancient aliens and all this stuff, which uh, gave you. And, of course, they come out with that, um, uh, with that show about ancient aliens. Uh, well, this is just an idea. Well, how garbagey is that? Do any other shows do that? Does the news say, well, this is contrived garbage given to me by the controllers in government? Yeah, we are in the Black Lodge. So that's what we are. So the whole idea is that all that stuff um, uh, is kind of interesting. But people got sick of that. 
And right now, pretty much everybody believes that has any kind of a brain uh, that extraterrestrials are real, they're coming here, they're visiting this planet, all these other things are real. Everybody has some sort of spiritual uh, experiences, many of them throughout their lives. And I document this in different uh, lectures of famous people who had all these experiences. And it goes on and on and on. I've only, uh, it's just a tip of the iceberg have we actually of those because almost everybody including the head of the skeptical society has amazing metaphysical experiences so um, all of this is something that we need to understand and work with properly out there so uh, so here we go again they have their contrived little stories they don't make any sense um, um, he makes sure that he comes up with some sort of little stone dropping or hands moving of a uh, I remember one thing he went into it was a big giant mannequin or doll like of a clown and it was full size approximately five six feet and he was looking around and of course the camera was perfectly positioned in the angle he wanted it to be in and he was facing it and its hand moved the dummy so which can easily be done by uh, using a piece of string which you'll never see on film so the whole idea is that this is the kind of thing that you see all the time. And of course, he happened to just get a picture of it. But other than these kind of really goofy things, he's never produced any result. 20 years on the show and there's never been any serious footage of any great degree. They're also using, instead of making sure they have people around with uh, Polaroid cameras, which are notorious for picking up these things, you'll never see a Polaroid camera ever on that show in 20 years. Does the film cost too much, Bilbo? What's the matter? You're going to get somebody with a brain in there who shows this that ain't you and it won't be you the hero, Bilbo? So the whole idea is that uh, none of this is there because there's no serious research. This is a show. This has no validity to it whatsoever. And I wouldn't be surprised when he finally retires or get kicked off. Now. Well, you know, he's going to make money from this. He, he, he gets all these things that are so-called have spirits in them and everything else and has people come and sit on them in his little museum and he's making a fortune there and this museum can go on till the day he dies and past that he can leave it to whomever his relatives are um so all of these things are, are part of it but you know bilbo has paid some prices i mean the bottom line is the investigations in these areas while they're not dangerous uh spiritually or from ghosts or anything else they are dangerous when it comes to basic health reasons going into abandoned buildings which are full of molds and toxins um have really taken a, a toll on his lungs who he generally is an asthmatic and has had serious problems with that well that's interesting and of course that's not looked at uh, the other interesting things that he has come up with, because I guess there's a shred of credibility to him, or at least comments as a human being, is the fact that he investigates all of these places where people were tortured horribly uh, within the United States. This is in some German Nazi camp, uh, which would be certainly interesting for someone like him to go to. I doubt if he ever would. Uh, but he went to prisons, mental institutions. And then, of course, you know, you get the history of it, how people were murdered and tortured there just for the fun of the community. Uh, so the whole idea and goes on to this day, uh, how people are murdered and tortured in prisons all the time. And they get murdered like uh, Bill, uh, what is it, Epstein, who was uh, so-called committed uh, suicide, who was murdered, uh, as far as I can uh, allege. And the whole idea is that um, um, nobody cares. This happens all the time. People are shot in the street in the back five times by uh, these criminal police officers, uh, who are not police officers, by the way. They're terrorists and should be dealt with as such. And why good police don't go after these, I have no idea. But uh, obviously they're afraid. But that's how most military and police are. They are afraid. They're not very good people. So the whole idea is that when you move into these areas, this is exactly what happens. So, um, so that is one interesting thing that he points out. And I think that's something that maybe people can learn from this, but I doubt it. People don't learn from much. But um, the fact is, are there ghosts? Are there spirits? Yes, there are. It's been proven for 150 years now by very credible people who have done it very scientifically. Not you, who has no scientific background. The only thing that Zach Baggins has is that he went to film school for eight months or however long that was to learn the physicalness of making films. 
So, and we don't know how his grades were or anything else, whatever that means. Uh, I'm not sure any of that matters. Uh, the bottom line is you, learn, you went there to learn how to make films. That's what you know. What is your background past that? Well, you graduated high school, okay? Um, shows that you're basically not a complete screw up or didn't have any problems. You kind of know English language and everything else. Uh, what do you know? So the point is, is you know nothing. You have no. Did you educate yourself further? I frankly, he, as far as I know, and of course he's been too busy for 20 years. Um, of course, I don't know if you're too busy. He had time to set up all sorts of other businesses. He wanted to do more shows. Well, I don't have enough time. I'm so busy doing this show. Oh, let's start another show. <laughs> So this is what he states, and of course, uh, cutting his, um, the guy who did have a lot of film credibility, I don't think he, he knew anything, though, but his story is much more interesting, uh, Nick Groff, uh, of all these things. So the point is, is that these are the realities that we need to understand of whom these people are. Nick Groff, Zach uh, Baggins is plain and simple, nothing more than uh, film school graduates from paid schools, not big time schools, not USC, not other stuff. And again, I don't know if that makes you anything special, but the point is, is they're just film school students. No background, no training, not even interest. None of them have said, I read a hundred books on Ghost, I've always loved it. No, I fell off of a thing and I almost died because I bled to death and that's near death experience. Yeah, really, Nick? And of course, uh, what do you, Zach? Yeah, spirit jumped on me and uh, stuff like that. So um, this is not proper metaphysical or ghost experiences. That's not, uh, these are not even things that have much value. I investigated something. I followed this. I traced this. And of course, talking to people doesn't mean anything anyway. You got to go out there and do things. So he doesn't use the right equipment. He's got an engineer who's lost in the valley of stupidity. And... Um, he has nothing. He's got regular film stuff. He isn't putting up new types of cameras. There's all sorts of technical. That costs money. And, you know, after all, he needs another, another Bentley uh, there. So, and he has to throw a couple of dollars at some charity. So, uh, he can't really do that. I'd like to see your bank account, Zach. So, the whole idea is, and the last thing he was trying to hawk several years ago, which, of course, nothing. He bought a, quote, haunted house. And he found out the reality of that is that, he had investigators, including um, how uh, you know how do you what do you call a police officer? Um, so the whole idea is that they're not really police; they're not officers. Uh, let's call them what they are: uh, gang members, um, who said they witness people crawling up ceilings and on the sides of this little house that he bought. And he talked about well, I, I, he bought this house from these people and made all these claims, and he was going to film all this stuff and produce it. Well, nothing has come from that. It's been about five years now. He even wrote a book on this because he wanted to promote it and then come out with the film a little later. Nothing has happened there because he was unable to film anything there because nothing happened. That's how it works. Is he going to sit in there? I don't know if he can drive his Bentley in there, but I don't know. Is he going to sit in there and watch for ghosts 24 hours a day? Is that what he really does uh, with all his uh, other things he can do to make money and so forth? Is he going to really cut down on his wallet size by trying to do serious research or hire somebody? Pay somebody? <laughs> oh, look out. I don't think so, Bill. So the whole idea is that that never happened. And then he said how he, you know, not too many people would do what I do, spent, I think he said $30,000 or something like that, 30, 50 grand on a house. What? <laughs> you can't build an outhouse for that money. So I don't know what it is or what the figure was, but it was still a low price for the house. Maybe uh, I kind of remember that, but it could be 70, 100. That's nothing to this guy. Not only that, it's a 100% business write-off, which he still owns, and I'm assuming could resell for at least his cost. So nothing happened there as well, because it certainly ain't going to happen from him. So he doesn't help any of the industry straightening that, oh, they're all in conflict, nobody agrees. Well, that's true, but you know, what world are you coming from, Zach? That doesn't matter. You start your own organization, you try and do things. But that would mean money. That doesn't return money. It's not a museum. It's not another TV show. It's not buying a house where you pay it with your business expenses and then get your money back. So it's none of that stuff. So there's nothing's coming out of your pocket. And as again, I'd like to see your expenses, and I'd certainly like to see all those great donations that you I love animals. Here's five thousand um, uh, dollars. Yeah, my shoes are ten thousand, but I really love animals. 
So this is the kind of nonsense. So I don't see him doing anything in that area. And if I'm wrong, sorry about that. I hope you are helping people, and I'm more than happy to um, say differently. So the whole idea is that, uh, and make a separate lecture on how great you are helping everybody. So um, all of that has to be. But the reality is that these people are trying to come off as serious investigators, scientifically. You know, all the people who are dumb bunkers and everything else have no background in science whatsoever, including the kind of stooges that um, for many, many years, the Mythbothers, yes, the Mythbothers, the guy who graduated as uh, from college, if you can call that a college, in acting and model building, and Mr. Beret Wearer got a degree in Rushki, yeah, I know Russian, that taught me how to be a scientist. So the whole idea is this is what you get of people that come out and start screaming the uh, scientific, um, which I'm not even sure what that means, but if you've looked into it, science has kind of been wrong. So, uh, but we want science, no matter how wrong it is. That's why the world never changes. That's why you're still driving crappy cars that kill the environment. So, uh, so all the stuff that's out there, people have to quite understand this at a very high level. And the high level is uh, that... Uh, these people know nothing, yet they get on a soapbox and people because, well, he's got a TV show. He must be a genius. He talks about science, uh, so he must be a scientist. This is how the public acts. So, uh, and um, there, there's a, they even tried to insinuate that one of the Ghostbusters teams, uh, Emma Hara, I believe is now, probably mispronouncing his name and I can't remember his first name, who recently just died, by the way, unexpectedly from a, um, uh, a heart attack, um, that he was a scientist. Okay? He built robots and stuff. Uh, he's, he's a scientist. Well, people don't understand the difference between engineering and science, and they're completely different. So he was an engineer. Engineers are not scientists. They put stuff together. They work with things. These are not contemplating how everything works. They're basically, to kind of sum it up, they work with physical reality. So he built robots, which has to do with making arms, putting stuff in there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all things that is much different than a scientist who's trying to figure out, well, what is quantum physics? What is Newton's law's effects on this? An engineer doesn't do that. Well, he may have some cursory knowledge of that. He's using what's proven. So, you know, bridges, if you use this steel rod, this steel rod holds 1,000 pounds. So if you put 10 of these, that's 10,000 pounds. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I can't fix my car. So um, these are all the things that are out there that people need to understand. So none of these people have any backgrounds. And I'm glad to say that old Bilbo is in the same category. No background, high school degree, went to eight months of uh, film school, locked out, uh, meeting this guy, and they jived about whatever. I guess they both had film school backgrounds, so they had something to talk about. And what happened was, of course, uh, they got together, and thanks to the connections from Nick Groff, um, they got this show on the air. You know, it's one of these typical Hollywood things, but, it, you know, the pieces connect. As he said, you know, you do have to follow through. It's not like you, you oh, yeah, my cousin works for uh, Travel Network, and I made a picture of my dog pooing, and uh, it's on the air now, and I do it every week. Well, it doesn't work like that. You have to come through with it. So, and that goes with most positions. You've got to follow through at least to some degree. It's hard to be hired just as the nepotism stube of someone um, if you can't produce in some fashion, um, even though obviously there's some jobs like that. But even if you get a job like that and you have to empty the trash, the bottom line get paid $100,000 a year. Um, the bottom line is that you still got to empty the trash. And if you don't, you get into trouble. So, I mean, that's how life goes. But uh, as I said, these shows are surprisingly, not particularly his in general. I've caught him um, on several different occasions, misstating things. I don't think everybody's caught it, but in general, the shows are fairly flawless. I'm sure they're looking for that, and I'm sure he's not looking for it. He has a new editor that watches every frame. They put these things together. You know, All this stuff takes an awful lot of work to do, and I'm sure they're very careful. What's their problem? Losing credibility. So if he comes out and laughs at everything, the show would be off the air instantly. What makes the show? What makes the show is the fact that this is real. As a famous magician once told me, who's well known, um, 
when talking about psychic powers, which he didn't want to directly admit he believed in, but he did. And, of course, Doug Henning, the famous magician um, who, who made, uh, who was very, very big, who died um, uh, suddenly, or was he murdered? So the whole idea is that uh, believed in this as well, but he believed in psychic powers uh, as, uh, as well, but wouldn't come out and actually say that because he's part of the confederacy of dumb bunkers. Um, he said, well, who would ever want to go see a fake psychic? So if you're a mentalist like Kreskin and other people who are doing tricks, and that's all they're doing. It's illusions. I do believe that Kreskin, who's been out there for many, many years, who's a very conservative, uh, apparently Polish-Italian Christian, um, who has very negative views to everybody in that, including on his uh, TV show from the 70s, who clearly stated, I'm not here to further any kind of occultism. And he had witches and other people on because they were popular and said, these are the strange, this is another way to say these are the most scumbucket people I've ever met. These are the strangest people I've ever met. Well, this is a way of using terms to do that. So people went on his show because of this kind of, but in the background, it's all these people are horrible. And he is basically, from what I can tell, a uh, while he claims to drop in and out of ESP and had courses and train people in using ESP, which is mind power. Uh, he's nothing more than a trickster. And people who do anything with cards are magicians. They're tricksters. So I do believe he's a great intelligence. He claims to read three books a day. Probably does. Um, and is he very psychic? Yes, he is. He has great ESP from what I can tell. And he also has all the other things he does to make himself look extremely good, which is high states of observation and all the tricks of his trade. So we all need to know, but why would you go see a fake psychic? Can you imagine that in Las Vegas? You're driving down the strip. Look at all the people, Margaret. <laughs> Who's that? Tommy Joan? I heard of him. Um, Who's that? Jay Leno? Is he funny? Oh, there he is. The fake psychic. Oh, fake psychics. Let's go in there and get fake readings and stuff that don't make no sense. <laughs> he taught me that in school. So this is exactly what you get. So you'd never go to a fake psychic. Why do you go to anybody is that, it, why do you go to magicians? To a large extent, you're not going in there saying, well, can I figure out how they're going to trick me? Huh? Well, what, what is that Penn and Teller? Is it, no, the illusion behind it, even with Penn and Teller, who I'm sure if you talk to them, as you said, you know, you're following is the fact that people think you're lying. That it is not fake, that it's true. And that's where you get your crowds from. And you even go so far as to expose other tricks to make what you do even more mysterious. So that's what goes. So nobody's going to go see a fake psychic. It's all based on, hey, Margaret, uh, this could be real. I'm telling you. So the whole idea is that's what it's based on. So nobody would uh, actually go to a fake psychic. So I, that's very important. That's the reason why I've spent a couple of minutes here and repeated it several times. You're not going to do that. So the whole idea is that this show saying, fake ghost adventures, we're not going to find anything. We're going to make little things that you think happen just for the fun of it. Tune in. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not unless you're going to put big-breasted girls up there naked and have all the other things going on. No, like Penn and Teller did on their show to make sure that they got ratings. I mean, that's where he comes from, of course, and whatever else he did there. Um, so the whole idea is that those are the, the realities. So all these shows that are popular now because people are sick and tired of healing, hearing everything is nonsense. There are no aliens. There are no ghosts. Well, almost everybody has seen UFOs. Almost everybody has had some sort of ghost uh, experience, uh, woke up in the middle of the night and then got a phone call from somebody saying that somebody died. Everybody has had these, and not only had it once or twice, probably five to 20 times in their lives. And I've documented a lot of this already. So everybody believes. So you're not going to sell that. So if he came on there and jokey jokey, and to a certain way he does that, but he tries to be very serious about it. So I don't mess with that. It's ghost. Yeah, but this is a game. I don't know why 
Um, he claims to have problems himself in certain areas, but of course, I don't know how true this is, that he's studying spiritually, um, that uh, he's had people and find out that clearings and other things don't work. People are haunted by ghosts, uh, they get demonic spirits attacking them, and somebody puts some goofball on that waves some uh, sage on them, and they're healed. doesn't work like that. It's not the way it goes. So once you're touched by the wings of the serpent, uh, these wings leave permanent marks, and how much that affects you is um, uh, something that is uh, individual. But you are now have a what would be considered a terminal disease that's going to affect you all your life, and eventually cause or assist uh, your own death. It just depends how quick and fast and how it is controlled, like any kind of consistent disability, so to speak. Uh, so that's important to understand as a person who's worked with these people and tried to protect people over the years. There's a lot going on and people don't understand that. So as we get involved in all this, we need to know the background of who these people are. They don't even bother to bring an expert in because that would make both of these guys uh, non-celebrities. Let's talk to the guy who knows. Uh, Jack, uh, we know you've been in ghost hunting and investigations and I've read actually a couple of books. Wow. And uh, I heard you even took a couple of courses. No, you've done a lot of research. Jack, tell us exactly uh, what's going on here, because I'm just a film student. I'm an idiot. So I don't know nothing. I just can hold a camera and kind of mouth a few words. You think they're going to do that? Very few shows do that. Now, some documentaries do this, and they go to experts that talk for a minute or so. Um... You'll see this on Ancient Aliens. They bring in people that don't really have the background, give them stuff to read, and then they talk about it. This is how it's done. So, and these people are authors of different books. I mean, it could be an author of books on ancient monuments, and they're going to talk about aliens. Well, how does that connect? So, but this is the type of things they do. But he's not going to do that, and they've never done that. And it doesn't seem like any ghost shows that I've seen have ever brought in anybody that has any qualifications in that field. Now, there is one ghost show, and I'll talk about, that apparently has a, quote, a woman with a parapsychology uh, degree, apparently worked with parapsychologists out of, and I'll talk about that, which name, of course, as usual, escapes me at this point, that's been on for many years. So it's this woman who got trained, I believe, in Arizona under a noted parapsychologist, and she works with a, I think the guy was on the... Uh, New York Police Department and worked a lot of uh, known cases and with the uh, mayor's office or whatever, a, a police detective uh, for 20 or 30 years. And he goes around trying to find out the more practical things. So if she says somebody was murdered in a house, he's going to go and do the investigation. So this has some credibility, but I don't, it's still Hollywood. She, as far as I'm concerned, and I will do something on that, is kind of a mental case, typical a New Ager. And of course, you know, their livelihood depends on this. You think they're going to, so everything they find are demons and they're screaming and yelling and they're pushing people downstairs. And of course, you know, I, I give no credibility to anybody because uh, that's ever in any kind of uh, police, military, etc. They're all professional liars covering up uh, basically all their misdeeds. Uh, they're They've been corrupt for 30 years, and police, their entire way of working, as well as the military, is to lie and cheat because they're not allowed to say anything, period. But that's their lies. What are they going to do? You think that a remote viewer is going to come out and tell you the fraudulent things that were done in that program? What do you mean? Cut off his book sales? Cut off his job he got doing that? Cut off his interviews? You've got to be kidding me. It's not going to happen. So there's really no credibility with anybody anywhere because everybody is one way or another corrupted and controlled. But at least that show has people in there. I mean, at least he was, whatever that means, a detective for 20 years. Uh, you got to figure he knows kind of the basics. Uh, how to open, I know how to open doors. I can drive a car down the street. Oh, okay, well, that's a start. And, of course, uh, she's always in her emotional, you know, it's all Hollywood. If you deal with that all the time, you're going to have problems. So, uh, the point is, is, everything she comes up with is dramatic, and they make sure they find cases. And I'm sure if the people weren't involved in murders, that they conveniently are. And I'm sure she says to herself, well, you know, they are spirits. We have to, and I've heard this from a lot of people. You know, it is Hollywood. We have to make it interesting. It's not a documentary. I've heard this from people about movies uh, that have been produced out there. Um, Walton, the famous UFO um, 
abductee is famous for making these days. It's Hollywood. You didn't expect them to make it. Well, yes, I do. You can make uh, accurate films that are interesting. Uh, but if you want to make kind of lazy stuff, well, you know, you just put up, uh, you know, have people run around half naked uh, and uh, you get people to look at it. I mean, that's the kind of low level junk filmmaking. So you can do it right. People don't want to bother because they're too stupid and they don't want to give power over to someone else. So you're never going to see them interview anybody who knows anything or does anything in any degree. Um, they are not going to do any credible investigations. Now, to do an investigation of a haunted place, you'd have to spend months there. They don't pop up. They go there and all of a sudden they, they get stuff in a couple of... Now, it says in his book that they, I think they spend an average of three to seven days at any place doing filming. And this requires locking the place down, getting security guards, making sure everything is done so they can film properly. Then you have to bring all the equipment in. Then you have to set everything up. I mean, this is a lot of arduous and slow job. But all investigations of this type are done over months and years. What you see that they claim they see in one episode would be the equivalent probably of 10 years worth of research by someone else. You can't go to a place and things just happen. It just doesn't work like that. Now, there's a few people, uh, some people claim to have called UFOs, etc., and on some of these occasions it's worked, but I'm not sure how this happens all the time. But there's no one that I know of that can particularly, and if they do state they can call ghosts, well, that's too much for that person. You're not going to get Zach to put them on and make them special. He has to be special. I found it. Um, so this is the real problem as well. But, you know, going to some place for a week or two produces nothing. You have to do things very carefully. You have to use special equipment, which he doesn't. As I've mentioned, not a single Polaroid in uh, view. And that's because it's not overly exciting and uh, to see these things, even though I think it is personally. But he doesn't want it. It's not me. I didn't make Polaroids. I ain't the cool dude. So they don't want to focus on those kind of things. So they want to use very bad digital equipment to try and produce things. And all these digital stuff that comes out from recorders to everything else are really bad technology. It has nothing new. Things prove much of anything. There are some devices that seem to help in these areas. And um, while he uses some of these things, it should be he doesn't want to make the show about tools. He wants to make the show about him. And what's happening because tools again tend to be boring because people are going to say what does the tool say now you can't make drama out of a flashing meter or gee it's a 10 that means there's a ghost is that exciting no no so something's got to fall oh do you feel that man uh so um this is the type of thing you're going to get not to did you see the meter man i didn't feel nothing well that's the most exciting thing i've seen that meter jumped from two to seven damn the ghost. So the whole idea is that this is the type of thing that Hollywood is very well aware of. And of course, I believe that there's balance that can be done. Let's show the real stuff and let's make fun stuff too. And I'm a strong believer in that. So, um, but they don't do that. Everything's basically a bad episode of Ghostbusters and uh, like the movie. It's just all contrived. Now, maybe he believes there's a giant Pillsbury Doughboy roaming New York and he's going to find it someday. Maybe he believes that, but we all know that that's Hollywood nonsense. And the fact that this was taken to be such a silly movie uh, by someone who claims he was into this is uh, annoying as well. I guess there's nothing wrong for that, but there's absolutely nothing in those particular movies of any value uh, in terms of ghost hunting and all the stuff they have is all just nonsense. So it's just a comedy and not a good one on the actual workings of uh, metaphysical and ghost uh, investigations. So all of that needs to be understood and known carefully and thoroughly. Um, so who these people are. So this guy is a nobody. He's a film student who found a way to make money, has now made a fortune. He's been doing it for 20 years. And as far as I know, and anybody can correct me, I've seen him do absolutely nothing but start more and more businesses, try and start new shows. I'm so busy. I don't have time and everything else. I think he even said he didn't have the money. He's done nothing to train himself or to start his own little organization because that would take a lot of work and that would take a lot of money that that he doesn't see anything back from. So if he has ghost investigation offices and hires a few people and pays somebody to make some devices, well, that's not going to put anything in his pocket. Does that make a better show? He's already made a goofy show that people watch for 20 years of him walking around. Um, 
and contriving things, making false drama. Um, all of that stuff has already been done. He's not doing any of that. He's not donating to any organizations that I'm aware of either in terms of, oh, here's money, you guys go do it. I'll help support you money-wise, which is the easiest thing to do and what a lot of busy people do because it's you don't know that much about running an organization, but you throw money at it and hopefully you throw money at people that are credible who use it properly. And of course, that's what all charities are about. And one of the big problems of giving to charities like the Red Cross, who has uh, on their board of uh, their major managers make millions of dollars a year in salaries. And uh, do you want to give to the Red Cross? Well, I would never give to the Red Cross um, until their uh, managing directors work for free. They ought to be donating their time to the cause. And that's the kind of people we get there instead of paying them a million dollars and giving them two million dollars in travel benefits, uh, which I'm assuming, if not used, goes in their pocket. I don't know, but usually that's how those things work. So as you understand all that stuff, so he's not doing that either. He's done nothing to further this industry except fill his pockets. So uh, that's the way it goes. That's the name of that tune, baby. And that's how we have to um, uh, understand what's, what's going on with these people and particularly him. Uh, certainly he has zero credibility, has done nothing, and will continue to do nothing in this field. Um, all of this is something that we need to uh, be very careful of when we're put out there. And that includes all these other shows like The Ancient Aliens, who everything is potentially aliens. Well, that's what the show's all about, so that's what they're going to state. And that goes with all these people. That UFO investigator show that didn't last long and they had no credible people on there. They're going to make drama. They're going to create everything. You know, they used to have to uh, put at the entrance of these kind of uh, uh, pseudo uh, uh documentaries a disclaimer that said that some of these things in this film are reenacted for dramatic purposes and that's right and the point is is they're not reenacted and of course that is important to make good tv to a degree as long as you're not overly distorting but what they're doing is making things up they'll take 12 hours as they did with me cut it down to three minutes and how can you possibly really get across what was that was all about you need something that gives detailed information of course they did nothing but uh, make me look like a fool and that was of course their idea done by the um, the horribly criminal investigator uh, uh, who is completely controlled I allege uh, Louis Thoreau who does shows on child molesters and then asks them to stay in his house <laughs> so the whole idea is this goes on and on with these things um, that um, needs to be dealt with of what's going on. Because if you get fooled into thinking that these are somehow credible people, that they're somehow investigators, and that the people they, the few people they do bring on, which generally are low-level, um, so-called, they're not even experts, like this electronic guy that um, he brings on, who knows nothing. And they're certainly not seeking people out. They never see any new faces. You never see any new technology. It's not about that. It's not about technology. It's not about finding answers. It's about making a good fictional show featuring Mr. Head Fiction Guy, Zach Baggins. After all, you can never have enough Bentleys or fancy Vegas houses, can you? Huh? Never have enough. Because life ain't about credibility and finding truth. It's about decadence. It's about doing nothing and sucking it off anybody. And of course, that's what you've done, Bilbo, and all of those people. It's sad as Goff uh, apparently had some credibility and tried to do good things and his shows failed. So I don't know what happens there, but of course, you know, having a semi, I don't know what uh, the appeal of Zach is, but having a semi-charismatic person like him uh, seemed to have helped that show. But, you know, once you're on for a certain amount of years, you've got an established audience. Uh, none of these shows do that great, but none of them do that bad. So this is all the reality of it. So wake up, people. Don't believe anything you see. Believe nothing of what you read or anything that anybody tells you. 
The only voice of truth out there, the only voice of gnosis out there is myself. And I'm the only person that I know of who isn't corrupted and who has done the research. I've been involved in these fields for 50 years. I am not corrupted or paid by anybody. The point is, is that's right. And my information is at least 98% correct. Now, there, I have made some minor errors in different areas, which generally haven't changed the bigger picture. But of course, everybody does that based on the information I have at that time. And things change. If I find new information, if I find there's a great credibility to this show or the people involved in it, I'll be the first one to get out there and tell you. I don't think I've ever done that yet for anybody that I've investigated. The point is, is that life is a shiny kind of pretty rock in the sun. You ever been out walking in a place that has rocks and a little kind of wilderness area? And uh, that's a pretty rock. And you look at it and then uh, you... You want to pick it up a little and you turn it over and what's there, all these bugs and creatures are underneath it and it's wet and everything else there. So that's what you run into when you see these things. So when you turn over the rock, it ain't shiny and pretty. It's full of bugs and disease. And that's what you find in all of life. But until everybody understands this and gets behind the reality of how these things are made and what is going on there, uh, you're never going to get gnosis. If you don't have the facts, the truth to deal with, then you're never going to be able to, at the very least, control your own world properly. If you go to people like doctors and expect to be healed because I'm paying my money, he's got a certificate, or you expect the police to assist you, you are going to fail and your life is gone. No reality, know what truth is all about. And it's not contrived. It isn't gray in life. Everything's gray. No. Life is very black and white on every single level. And until you understand the black and white, you will fall into traps of this. It's not the fact that, oh, Thor, you're an investigator in these areas for many years. I want to buy into this and give them praise. No, I don't. I don't give praise to any of these people unless they're doing a proper job. I don't want to believe in a fantasy. I want to know the truth. And so should you.